Um, a few announcements I want to highlight. They're in your blue um, insert. We have um, Adult Choir is resuming this week, so Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, 7 to 8.30 p.m. And they'll be singing next Sunday, so bring your voices. Susan's always happy to have new people, so come on out for that. Um, we want to thank Bob Triano. He's our new treasurer. We thank Gloria for her years of service. Manna will be meeting next Saturday at 10 a.m. in the Clements Room. Ignite is back on next Sunday, September 20th, at the Parsonage at 6 p.m. We have our ongoing clothing drive, and as usual, we just collect all of your donations, and we can leave them in the park, uh, next to the Parsonage. Not in the Parsonage, <laughs> next to the, uh, <laughs> next to the um, doors over there in the uh, garage. Okay. We also, coffee hour, we're still looking for people to sign up, please. There's a sign up sheet in the bulletin board to the left of the kitchen. And um, also, I just want to point out one thing, the flower envelope that you get in your, um, in your box of envelopes. A few people have questioned what that's for. So there's a sign up sheet in the back also, and you can sign up on Sunday that you would like the flowers to be in remembrance of a loved one or in honor or something. So you would sign up your name on the sheet in the back. You would put who it's in memory of or in honor of, and then your name, who's giving it, and then there's an envelope. And when that Sunday comes, you will fill out the envelope with your name. The donation is $20, and you would just put it in the basket. And then at the end of the service, you would take the flowers home with you. Okay, if you have any more questions on that, you can ask any other. Any other announcements? Okay. So as we listen to the prelude, let us draw nearer to God by focusing our minds and hearts on our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as we prepare to worship our awesome and holy God. Thank you.
Good to see all of you. We're, we're back, so to speak. And uh, we still have some time. Yes, we still have some time for uh, hymn sing. So if you want to open up your, your hymn books, we do have one outstanding request. Um, it's He Touched Me. So 505. 505. Let's go to 505. That was from a while back. We'll do the whole thing. It's two verses. He touched me.
Yes, one more. Please. Okay, Evelyn. Three, four, two. Three forty two is Rock of Ages. We'll do uh, one and three. Please.
piece of Christ. We need God's help in so many ways. The primary way is with forgiveness of sins. And He freely, lovingly wants to uh, remove those sins, so much so that He sends His Son to the cross to die for, not His, our sins. The power of the Holy Spirit working in our lives to purify us and move us away from sinful ways. So, we're thankful for that. Let's ask for His help. Lord, uh, we do turn to You. As much as we try, as much as we try on our own, and as much as we fail, we still fall short of what You're asking of us, which is complete obedience and holiness. And so we need Jesus' help. We call on Him to forgive our sins, to pay for the debt of our sins. And of course He did, and so we, we stand forgiven. But this power of sin, it's still working in our lives. So we're asking for forgiveness and mercy, yes, but also the power of the Holy Spirit to repent, to say, I don't want to do this anymore. And to turn to obedience and to follow by loving you more than anything in our lives and then taking that and loving our neighbors as ourselves. We thank you for <coughs> forgiveness. We thank you for this opportunity to draw nearer to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Take a few moments of silent prayer and reflection. Please join me in the assurance of forgiveness. What can what wash, wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood, blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. Amen. Thank you. I'd like to invite Mr. Frank forward.
any of the expenses from the church. Hmm? Yes, and it well, it goes to all of our um, youth ministry project night. Uh, fun things to do. Sometimes we like to get together and do some things. Because believe it or not, um, we do like that the church can be fun. So we would like to do a lot, a lot of those fun nights uh, for the kids. And it's a great fellowship um, for all of the kids, all of the youth of the church to get together and do things. Uh, this will be a wonderful year. We want to thank all of you for your support, uh, encouraging each other, encouraging your child to to listen and to learn the word of uh, God. Um, I'd like to ask all of our uh, Christian education teachers, aides, music director, substitutes, and students to please stand as uh, the pastor gets to say it for us. So students, teachers, please stand. Teachers, helpers, okay, very good. Also, just an announcement, we do have adult classes as well. 9 o'clock, 9.15 on Sunday morning. Though, next week, uh, I won't be there. I'll be with the confirmation students. And the week after that, we're having a representative from uh, Jews for Jesus who's going to talk to us about how to better understand and reach out to our Jewish friends. So that will be on the 27th. After that, then, it's adult uh, study as well as well as Thursday night. So please lead that in mind. But now a blessing for our Christian education. Let's pray. Lord, we ask for your Holy Spirit's power to be so present in this place, not only for our worship, but our, for our time of teaching, for our time of learning, a time of fellowship as well. Give teachers and leaders strength and patience and fortitude. Give students open hearts and minds and endurance as well. <coughs> And we're so thankful, Lord, that we have this opportunity, that there are children here, that there are uh, adults who love children and want to care for them and teach them. Uh, give us all the ability to do this faithfully and well. We send you forth in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, we're going to dismiss the children by classes, uh, just by your school grade. Um, as I announce each grade, please, teachers, if you want to step to the back and meet your uh, teachers. Uh, first, we have preschool, kindergarten, and first grade. Uh, we'll meet with uh, Mrs. Beckus and Mrs. Marino in the back. All the little ones. Go ahead. This is what we do every Sunday. Third and fourth graders will be meeting Mrs. Peluso. Uh, Mrs. Callie will also be a substitute this year. Um, hopefully, Ms. Kate can also. Do we have any second, third, and fourth graders? Um, we have a new order. Fifth and sixth graders, Mrs. Sandstrom, our new teacher this year. And this will be uh, seventh and eighth graders. We'll be once again with Mrs. Lesberg. And we also this year, Mr. Red Vanley is going to be holding a young adult class. This will be for anyone who's in, uh, who's, who's interested in expanding your faith knowledge. Uh, and this will be for any high school, college, college age kids who want to join. So Red Vanley's in the back. You guys go up to there. This also goes for the confirmants. Any confirmants this year will also be Mr. Redman. Um, I can't, I can't uh, dismiss the adult class because then I'd be up here all by myself. Uh, so I'll allow the pastor to so Thank you, everybody, for your support. We're going to sing, Now I Belong to Jesus, number 501.
Turn to God's Word this morning. I, these are very important scriptures for, for us as Christians. They uh, belong on the refrigerator or noted on your device. They're very essential about how to do this, about how to live this. So I want you to listen carefully this morning. Let's pray for some help. Lord, we turn to you because life gets so overwhelming. And we try to do the right things. And we try to learn more about you. And we try to draw closer to you. And life gets in the way. And a whole bunch of things happen. Help us to stay focused. Help us to hear your voice through this word so clearly this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Turning to first, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 14 through 18. Listen carefully, you'll hear some similar sentiments in each of these passages. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 14 through 18. Listen for God's word. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that one has died for all. Therefore, all have died. And he died for all, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from the human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from the human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So, if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See Everything has become new, and all of this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Let's turn to Galatians, chapter 2. Galatians, chapter 2, verses 15 through 21. Let's go to 17. But if in our effort to be justified in Christ, we ourselves have been found to be sinners, is Christ then a servant of sin? Certainly not. But if I build up again the very things that I once tore down, then I demonstrate that I am a transgressor. For through the law, I died to the law, so that I might live to God. And I have been crucified with Christ. <laughs> It is no longer I that live, or who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. And the life I live now, I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself up for me. I do not nullify the grace of God, for if justification comes through the law, then Christ died for nothing. It's the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yes. <clears throat> Some of you will remember the famous Saturday Night Live skit starring Stuart Smalley, who was a character who, uh, at the beginning of this skit, would look in the mirror and say, I'm smart enough, I'm good enough, I'm good looking, and doggone it, people like me. And then would turn to the camera and, and talk to the audience. But you know, around that time, the late 1980s, early 90s, we started to notice this whole movement of affirmation and kind of self-improvement. Remember, that's uh, going back 20 years or so. Now we're to the point where it's everywhere, whether it's books, whether it's speakers. You've heard of Tony Robbins and all of these people, self-improvement. The message being, of course, you are good, you are important, and you can be better. Now, on the surface, it doesn't sound too harmless, right? Not at all, but we're also seeing some, some very dangerous byproducts of all of that. And 
We joked about this before, and all humor aside, but the idea of taking selfies with your camera or with your device, on the surface, again, seems pretty harmless. I just want to take a nice picture of myself and share it with everyone. But if you remember, throughout history, portraits were done of whom? George Washington, you know, people like that. Now, with Instagram, everyone is now a celebrity, and everyone is now so important that we need to see hundreds of pictures of you. Does that sound, does that sound right or healthy? It gets worse. Now, some of you may love Frank Sinatra, and one of your favorite songs of his might be, I Did It My Way. Nice song, but here's what's happening. We've got a whole bunch of people in this world, and we have through history, but more intensely now, insisting on my way. My way. Most of the damage of the work that is happening right now is coming from people, citizens, or leaders who are insisting on my way. And that's just on a general level. Let's talk about in families. We have family members who insist on my way. What happens? Not a lot of fun for everybody. It happens in churches too when you have people who say, my way. And I invite you, if you ever think that I'm doing anything that has to be my way, please ask me. Because this is not my way. It's Jesus' way. It's not perfect. There may be times where I go off track. That's why we have elders. That's why we have you to say, hey, you're off track. But it can't be my way. It can't be anybody else's way. It's Jesus' way. But just those three areas, society, families, work even, you have people at work who insist on my way. And by the way, all of this, all of this my way stuff, is it working? <laughs> is it working at work? Is it working in families? Is it working in church when someone has to have their own way all the time? No. In the world, is it working? No. So what's, with all this emphasis on you, it's all about you. How many marketing campaigns have you heard? It's all about you. Have it your way. That may sell hamburgers, but it's not going to work for life. We're developing a whole society of narcissists, people who are only consumed with their self, their importance. And we have some people from the greatest generation in this room. They didn't think of me. They thought of we. We've gone in a matter of decades from we to me. Essentially, we are now a people of <coughs> me. And that doesn't work. It doesn't work as a community, all of this. But more importantly, we have to find a way to go from me to he. That's where the fulfillment is. That's where the meaning is. That's where the wholeness is. See, all of this me stuff, you know, if we peel off the, the skin, so to speak, and look behind the curtain, it's a drive to be important. It's a drive to feel important. It's a drive to, to matter. And I understand some of that drive sometimes comes from a hurt place. And we have compassion for that. But again, we don't want it to go into <clears throat> destructive ways. All these lies that we're told by this society, remember, we're deconstructing deception. We're being deceived into thinking, you are the most important person. You have all the answers. You can save yourself. You can be good enough. And yet here in this, in this very room, and hearing this word, it's the complete opposite. And so if you're tired of trying to build yourself up 
You're trying to self-improve and self, 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 and you're tired of yourself. Good. That's the design. We were never designed to be unto ourselves. Let's hear how we can go from not only me to he, capital H, me to he, but miserable to fulfilled, confused to more focused, bewildered to meaning, deconstructing deceptions. And these scriptures are blockbusters. They're um, missiles that that take away from uh, this deception of the importance of self. 2 Corinthians, Corinthians chapter 5. The most important verse here, of course, is what it says. Well, two, two of them, but he died for all. The cross, right? Jesus died for all so that all who live, those who live, might no longer live for themselves, but for him. And you think to yourself, well, I've heard that, I mean, yeah, I'm supposed to follow Jesus, and, you know, he can be number one in my life. These aren't cliches, these aren't catchphrases. It's the way to truly live. And so, again, back to that verse 15, <coughs> that we might no longer live for ourselves. That's what we're, that's this mess that we're in. We're living for ourselves. Last week we talked about materialism, living to accumulate stuff and wealth. We talked about the folly of that. Now we're taking a little, you know, zooming in, so to speak, and we're saying if you're living for yourself and all your desires and all your all that matters to you, it's empty. Have some people acquired a lot of wealth because of that? I guess. Have some people achieved some amazing things as far as society considers? Probably. It's still empty. To live for just yourself doesn't accomplish anything. Let me tell you another part of this. At the heart, some of you know this, at the heart of things like being an alcoholic, being an addict, a lot of times we look at people like that and we say, well, they just really loved drinking, they really loved drugs. No. That was a, that was a side part of it. Those diseases are actually diseases of self. You talk to anyone in AA, and they will tell you that I focused so much on myself that I lost my family, that I lost control of drinking and drugs. We like to think of it as, hey, I just had too many you know, drinks. No. It was a, an overwhelming focus on self. That's the truth. So, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, Paul says, we no longer live for ourselves, but we live for him. And then watch what happens. The consequence, 16. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Human meaning, live for yourself. Flesh, desires that go nowhere, ultimately. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, he's raised, we no longer see him in that way. And then there's 17. So if anyone is in Christ, if you're seeking him, if you're a believer, if you're a follower, if you're in Christ, there, all around this room, is a new creation. Something is going on in your life. Christ is doing a new work. Sometimes it's amazing and fast. Sometimes it's slow, but there it is. The old has passed away, everything has become new. This is to say that if we're going from me to he, we're going from broken to whole, and all of those things, we have to put to death, so to speak, our old self. That's what this means. In Christ there's a new creation. The world has passed away. Again, does it happen overnight? For some. But for most, it's, a, it's an arc. It's a motion. And speaking of that, just to, to highlight this, when we think of arcs, 
literature, film, plays. What is the common denominator of most villains in plays, movies, and books? They're seeking their own selfish agendas. Now, some of them will say, well, I was, I was treated badly as a kid, and, you know, in a humorous kind of way. It's not humorous, it happens in real life. But that's how those, you know, plays and books and movies treat it. But most villains have no concept of anyone else, no concern for anyone else, and just go about wrecking the world or whatever context they're in. Now, you say to me, Pastor Chris, well, I'm not a villain. I don't see any villains here, you're right. But we all do this, including myself, to some degree. We live for ourselves. And sometimes we look at other people and we say, they're in the way. It's not living for Christ. Remember, the simplest way to explain why we're here, what we're doing is... Love God and love the letter. Love your neighbor. Remember what I said. Who's missing in that equation? Who's absent? We are. Yet, if you love God with all your heart, soul, and strength, and mind, and you love your neighbor as yourself, you find true fulfillment. Because we're no longer living for ourselves. I'm loving God and devoted to what he's asking of me. And then I'm taking that and giving to somebody else. And through that I'm blessed. Here's what we do. I ignore God and crush my neighbor. I check in with God sometimes and I do whatever I want and then ask him for forgiveness after. I say that partly humorous, but partly not. It's not true. If Paul wasn't clear enough in 2 Corinthians, in Galatians chapter 2, he takes it a step further as we go from me to he. He says, For though the, through the law I died to the law, this is 19, so that I might live to God. Meaning, I died, I, I'm done trying to follow the rules. I'm done trying to do this on my own power, myself. I died so that I might live to God. And he says, I have been crucified with Christ. That doesn't mean, because we know, Paul didn't get up on a cross and die there. But he recognizes that the cross represents the death of self and selfish desires and fleshly desires. And if we allow that power in our lives, then, like he says, we no longer live for ourselves, but live to God. Now, yes, is having our desires and our our flesh crucified? Yes, that is a painful reality for Christ and a painful process for us. But what happened after Good Friday? What happened on Sunday? Resurrection, new life. It's the same thing for us. When we put to death those agendas and desires and all of those things that have to do with our self, then we find new life. So he says, I've been crucified with Christ. Then 20, please take Galatians 2.20 and memorize it and put it somewhere. And it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. In the life I now live in the flesh, because we're still in the flesh, encased in flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. It's no longer I who live, and you say, but well, wait a minute, what, what happens to me? <laughs> Aren't I treasured by God? Aren't I, you know, uniquely created by God? Absolutely, that's not going away. God doesn't say, this is rotten, I throw this out. But like Christ, he died in the flesh. And then he is raised anew. And clearly, people recognize him, except for Mary in the garden, but then she does. They get to touch him. He's alive. It's him. And he's no longer at the mercy of death and sin. That's what you and I, that's what's, you, what's waiting for you and I. <coughs> if 
we say goodbye to ourself. We'll still be ourselves, but we'll see more and more powerful shaping by the Holy Spirit. It's no longer I that live, but Christ lives in me. This is one of the most important things to understand about our faith. And it's no wonder that there's so much pressure and so much force from this world and society pushing against it, saying, be yourself. You are awesome on your own. And yes, everyone has gifts. Everyone has wonderful things about themselves. But if our goal remains just ourself, that's flesh. That's just human. That will not last. <clears throat> Katie, wasn't it Copernicus who said, the earth is not the center of the universe, the sun is. Wasn't it? No, no. They didn't like him. Whoever it was, sorry. Sorry, astronomy <coughs> people. Um, but there was a figure that said, here, here for a long time, throughout history, throughout history, people thought the earth was the center, and the sun revolved around the earth. And then he came along and said, no, the earth is out here, the sun is here. And like Katie said, that was a terribly upsetting um, thought for so many people. And in some ways, that's what we're saying this morning. We talk about God's the center, God's important, but we live as if we're the earth and the sun, meaning God, revolves around us. And again, I just keep having to ask respectfully, is it working? Even if it was working, which it isn't, it's not true. And so we're going this morning from me to he, because we've awakened to the idea that just me doesn't wind up with any meaning, any purpose. We often wind up just alone. Nobody wants that. And that wasn't God's design. All along, from the moment you've been born to the moment you die, is a journey towards closeness with God through Christ. And yes, are there periods of time where we develop and we develop interests and passions and giftedness and all of those things coming from God? Yes. But has to be focused on Him. We're going from me to He this morning. And there'll be a whole journey there. Like I said, it's not going to be overnight. But I'm asking you, this Word is asking you to leave, to leave ourselves behind. Scary, yes. Into the unknown and unfamiliar. Yes, but life, it's no longer I that live, but Christ who lives in me. And just imagine for a moment what that will be like. It will be fearless. It will be a place of strength. It will be a sense of greater purpose. That's just individually. What about on a church level? Then we're not corrupted by personal agendas in my way, and it's our way, and Jesus' way. And think of the power and the space that the Holy Spirit has to work in that. And then on a societal level, we try to influence there, not imposing, saying, our way, but here's the way. And will everybody listen? <clears throat> but will some, will some hear this and also recognize the fatigue of enough of me already. And we turn to he. It may just be pronouns, me and he, but it will make all the difference in our lives. From me to he. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for this gift. This gift that this is not the end. Just 
us. Just our selfish ways. That, you know, for a lot of us, we've, we've tried to break out of, but it just feels so comfortable, or just, it, uh, it works. <laughs> Usually just for us, and not for anybody else. We're sorry for that. We're sorry that too often, I've said, we've said, my way seems better, my way seems easier than your way. We're sorry for that. We repent of that this morning. And we're sorry for buying into the lies, the deceptions, that we are so important. Humanity is more important than you. We're turning away from that this morning by the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of this Word. And it's no longer we who live, but you living in us. We look forward to the, the power. We look forward to the purpose. We look forward to the healing and the wholeness. Thanks to your son, Jesus. Amen. Very good. When we're no longer looking for ourselves, then we look at our financial resources differently. We realize God has given us what we need, and then we take a portion of it, and we give it back to him. We do it cheerfully, as the scripture says. You don't say, well, I guess i got to give to church, or I guess I should give something to God. We realize it's his, and we realize it's not ours. We have needs, we meet them, and then there's honoring God and helping one another in the community and the world. Let's do that together now. Please pray with me. Lord, we're so thankful. We want to stop and think about it acknowledge how good you are in us and we do it through prayer but we also do it physically we write a check or put money in the plate or in the envelope and we say thank you thank you for what you've given us here's a gift back in faith we lift these up to you in Jesus name Amen please be seated take time for prayer every prayer makes a difference to God every prayer makes a difference in people's lives don't shortchange it. Don't underestimate it. Whether it's as simple as help me or a whole eloquent prayer about uh, some problem in society. Everywhere, all between that, every prayer counts. Even as Scripture says, even when we don't have the words, Holy Spirit helps. Those prayers count too. Let's share some joys and concerns together. Good. Plenty to pray about. Let's pray. Lord, we come to you hopeful, even with a whole bunch of terrible things happening in our lives in this world, because you're above them all. We trust you. You've been faithful. You'll continue to be faithful. And you're our shelter and our shield. So we come to you this morning, lifting up a number of people. We want to give thanks for some, some good news with Audrey and with Tony. Give thanks for that. And Art as well. Pray for continued... Uh, and M as well, continued uh, good recoveries there. Well, we want to also pray for those who are grieving. We lift up Adam, give thanks for his life, and pray for comfort for friends like Lynn and his family, also Aunt Darren and the, the Gongs and the Donahues. Um, pray for comfort there as well. We have so many things going on in our lives. We want to lift up Winnie. During this time, be with her, and uh, we pray for comfort for the family, and uh, we pray for answers as to what's going on as well. Lord, we praise you. We give you thanks, even in difficult times. But please, be near us. Remind us we belong to you. And let us pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen, yes. We close with, I am his, he is mine. Say that 
over and over in your mind gives you great assurance. Amen. Amen.